up in, uh, what's the town's name? Neander. No, the town name. Um, Mumbery? Metmond. Metmond. So we just started. How they were found. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, and it's in German here. So they found 16 bones made up of the mysterious finding discovered by the workmen clearing Feldhof Cave in August of 1856. They were immediately identified as human remains by Johann Karl Fuchroth, the first person to examine them. Look. Here we see, yes, the harsh brow ridge of the Neanderthals. So these are bone fragments and they were discovered during the 19th centuries and they were dating to be approximately 40,000 years old. So, oh this is in, um, this is only in German, this little mm, oh, this is part fragment. there. Yeah, oh it's a new fragment. New fragment. These are bone fragments dating to be 44,000 years old. This Neanderthal was bone structured, indicating it was a female. Um, and the excavations were done in 2000. So as Johann Karl Fulhort, he did not leave behind any records. The exact position of the destroyed cave was soon forgotten. But in 1997 and 2000, two other archaeologists set out to locate the famous site of Neanderthal skeletons found. Um, the caves were in limestone, and stone tools and animal bones were found. OK, this is a Neanderthal woman about 40,000 years ago. So they look pretty much like us, except their faces had a bit of a difference. She has a harsh brow ridge, I guess, and her jaw is a little bit facing forward. So, okay, and let's move on to the next guy here. This is what they assumed Neanderthals looked like. If you actually look at him close, close up close, he looks completely as we do today, Homo sapiens sapiens. So, not much of a difference. He does have a little bit of a brow ridge though, but everything else is skeleton. His skull is the same size as ours. You know, his, uh, his arms and legs are of proper proportions, so... Just an assumption based on the uh, fragrant, um, the remains, fragments. And this is modern Homo sapiens sapiens. This is us today. So you can see the difference. And um, so our species emerged about, well, when this species, Homo sapiens sapiens, emerged about 40,000 years ago, the last age was approaching. And the Homo sapiens sapiens reached Australia by boat. They came from Siberia. They settled across to America via the Bering Land Bridge. Most of the world's ocean had frozen to form glaciers, and as a result, the sea level fell temporarily, revealing a land link. Okay, that ended my talking there. And about 10,000 years ago, the last ice age finally ended and the climate soon resembled our own. And this is modern human. A lot of tool fragments, and as time um, went by, the tools actually became much more sophisticated considering what they used to look like two million years ago as opposed to eight, 20 to 18,000 years ago. Um, they became much more 
solid and uh, sharp and they could be used in various they could be used for many needs much more than how they used to shape them two million years ago how does it work <laughs> what is it? Darf man anfassen, aber bringt nicht so ein Loch im Holz. Das ist ja für die kleinen Kinder, die sich da ein Meter gemacht haben. Das ist erlaubt? Ja. Aber auch alle. It's right, yes. Okay, here is a little glimpse again. The continuation of the museum. I skipped a few areas there just because there's so much. Okay, so now we stopped in a town called Rostadt just to get something to eat and we ordered Spätzle. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. It's a German word. It's like I'm not even going to say it's like a noodle because it really is not and the Germans get quite offended when you do say it's a noodle so it's just called Spätzle and we got a cheese Spätzle with some salad so I think that should be good and then after that we're going to go and have some gelato okay so I'll show you what the place looks like it's here behind me and I'll show you what the downtown looks like. It's a pretty laid back town. So nothing's really open. It's so early, but um, they close down really uh, at a really early time. The Germans and the Swiss, I think six o'clock in the evening. And that's it for them. So. There it is. I forgot to mention that I bought quite a few things from the Neanderthal Museum which I'm going to share with all of you this evening. Um, some books which I'm dying to read about the Neanderthals and I even got a little kit. It's so small, it's like a little box that you can excavate your own Neanderthal skull. Um, even comes with brushes. Um, Hi everyone, sorry I didn't uh, vlog the food. I completely forgot as I was so hungry, but the spätzle was fantastic and the salad was really good too. It was actually a tuna salad with some beets and coleslaw. And now we took a little stroll before we head back into the car. And we are here looking at some sort of a, a what once was a residence. I think it's a I think it is actually a museum today. I have absolutely no idea because it's completely closed, but it's magnificent. It's huge, it's grand, and the sunlight hitting the facade is breathtaking. So, very appreciative that we stopped by. You know, I didn't even know about this town, Rashtatat. The name doesn't sound very <laughs> inviting, but just by chance, we happened to find this little gem. So that's how it is in most places in Europe. You just get off the freeway, go into a cute little town, and in every town there's something that it offers, something wonderful. So this is one of them. There's just so much culture in Europe. I'm so fond of that. Some sort of an emblem for something. Not quite sure yet. Okay, so here I am in front of an archaeological museum that spans out from, it has artifacts from the Stone Age to the Middle Age. 
So I didn't get a chance to go in and I probably will not just because we have to leave in about 45 minutes and I think it would take a little bit longer than that to see the whole museum. But I will show you what I have been buying for the last couple of days and I thought I would do it outside here on this beautiful, beautiful grass with this beautiful fountain and it's just so relaxing. Uh, we just finished our meal and my tummy's happy. So here we are. Okay, so this is actually from the French pharmacy. So the first product that I purchased was, um, I have a bug on my hand, was uh, a body lotion and uh, the girl um, behind the counter at the pharmacy stated that this is really good. It's really good for, I guess, a little bit of uh, sensitive skin and it's for dry skin as well, which is exactly what I'm in need of. So um, I can't wait to try this. Then, of course, I found the Bioderma. It's a soothing repair cream. And it says even here, it's for irritated, damaged skin, so it restores, relieves, and purifies. It's paraben-free and hypoallergenic. I've never tried anything from Bioderma other than their cleanser, which I'm about to show you next. It's one of my favorite cleansers for taking off makeup and stuff, so. Okay, so here is the Bioderma, the, the H2O water and I have no idea what is inside this water but it works like magic. It takes away every single trace of makeup including waterproof, um, including waterproof foundation. So it's kind of like a miracle and if they had a bigger size I would have bought that but they did not. So that should last me for a little while and I actually think they do sell Bioderma in Canada in Shoppers Drug Mart. So. But I thought I would purchase it from here since uh, it was a sure buy. Next, I'm actually really excited to try this. It's a night cream and it's for extremely dry skin. Um, anything that's recommended for night, I assume, especially body cream, means that it's extra, extra uh, nourishing. And the tub is a pretty good size, so that will probably last me a while. Oops, just fell out of my hands. So yeah, I could picture this lasting me a couple of months, but then you never know. The way I use things, you never know. <laughs> okay, and this, I haven't had a chance to use it yet, but I really want to. It's the Chlorine Shampoo. It's with almond milk. It's volumizing and thickening. Not that I need that, but I just like the fact that it's with almond milk. My hair is already quite thick and it has a lot of volume, but um, I think the scent is really nice, so I'm going to give that a go. Actually, I'm a big fan of chlorine products, and I find the ones that they sell in Canada are not the ones that come from Paris. I think that they're modified. Who knows? Things are added to them. I don't think they're the pure, um, pure brand. Like the brand is supposed to be known for purity, and I don't think that's what's in the Canadian um, products, especially chlorine. Okay, and last two products from the French pharmacy are the, I bought the Jelly Royale. Um, we have this in Canada, but I have never seen it in Amkil Forum. It's for your system, for your immunity, to bring up your energy. And then I bought another one with magnesium again, and this one's to fight physique and nervousness. And I'll show you what they look like. It's quite neat, actually. Never seen royal jelly like this. They're in Amkil Forum. And I think that's fantastic because every time I've seen them, they they um, come in jelly um, jelly tablet form. So I think this would go straight to your straight into your blood, and uh, it would be distributed throughout your body, and would give you instant energy pretty much instead of it being processed through your stomach, um, losing half of the vitamins or extract inside the, the tablet and it's taking about 30 to 45 minutes to take effect just because it's going through your stomach. When it's in liquid, liquid form it goes straight to your blood. And that's for the um, French pharmacy. Okay, and this is the German pharmacy now. First product is the Walida. 
I'm a big fan of Walida. And then I bought this lip balm, which the lady behind the counter recommended. This is the... This is the hand cream that I purchased from Lalit and it comes with a lotion as well. Quite excited to try that because the pomegranate is known for its um, antioxidant properties. Then I purchased um, a little trial size of the hand cream. Big fan of Lalita. I love their products. And this is the regenerative um, cream or lotion, I'm assuming. It's pomegranate, I think. This, the girl behind the counter said, is one of the best lip balms that they have. It's for extremely dry lips, which I'm going to appreciate greatly. Then, I bought something else from Walida. It's from another company. It says Needy Pharma Cosmetics. So, and that was it for my uh, pharmacy shopping for now. And I will be showing you next the Neanderthal Museum items. And this is what I purchased from the Neanderthal Museum. This is the Neanderthal's book. It's quite interesting. I actually started reading it yesterday. It's everything about them, how they have evolved, what their teeth were like, um, what they ate, uh, their brain size, um, body, robust body. So can't wait to read the rest looks really interesting something that I'm studying anyways in school okay and this is a more of a textbook type of a book it has over 30 journal articles written um, I think it says in the front that over 90 scientists attended the Metamoon site Metamon site in 1998 um, 90 scientists attended and uh, 30 wrote journal articles and this is a combination of um, the 30 journal articles and a little bit more, of course. So this is more of a difficult read, but it's no different than any of my textbooks on primates. So excited about that, too. This I thought was so adorable. It's actually an, uh, a kit that you can use as though you're an archaeologist and you can excavate the Neanderthal skull. So it's in a little box. And it comes with two little brushes, which I find too adorable. And you can go inside and just start brushing away the top debris mm -hmm. and reveal what the what the skeleton looks like, what the brain of the Neanderthal looked like. <coughs> so this should be really neat. I thought it was adorable. And then next HR bought this. It's like a Stone Age pocket lighter kit. There's no really lighter in there, um, just a way of making fire by using two stones and kind of um, rubbing them together. And this is to put underneath the stone and you just kind of crack them on top of each other. So you cannot wait to try that as well. Can't wait to see that. And I told him do not do it on the airplane right back might be very interesting. And then I bought this necklace, thought it was super unique. No, it just, maybe it does resemble something the Neanderthals would have made, but I just thought it was cute and very wearable. And last but not least, one of my favorite items. I have to get out of its packing. Okay, and last but not least, one of my favorite items is a mug, and it has, <coughs> it's so adorable. First of all, it comes in the color pink, one of my favorites, and it shows how we have progressed over time, so starting from 7 million years ago, and how we have evolved into the Homo sapiens that we are today. Super neat, and inside it says Neanderthal.de, D stands for Germany. So I can't wait to get my hands on this and start drinking my tea. And I even like the shape and size of the mug. I'm really picky about that. It cannot be just any standard size. So quite unique. And uh, that's it for now. So...
start a lot.